Welcome to the And She Looked Up podcast. Each week, we sit down with inspiring Canadian women who create for a living. We talk about their creative journeys and their best business tips, as well as the creative and business mindset issues all creative entrepreneurs struggle with. I'm your host, Melissa Hartfield, and after leaving a 20-year career in corporate retail, I've been happily self-employed for 12 years. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a multi-six-figure-a-year entrepreneur in the digital content space. This podcast is for the artists, the makers, and the creatives who want to find a way to make a living doing what they love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the And She Looked Up podcast. As always, I am your host, Melissa, and this week I am here with a solo episode, which I haven't done one for a while, so I thought it would be kind of fun to do one now. Um, And this week I'm going to be talking about something we haven't really addressed on the podcast in its own episode, and that is self-care or health and wellness or mental and physical well-being, um, looking out for number one, taking care of yourself, however you want to refer to it. Uh, That's what I wanted to talk about today as we are getting ready to gear up and head into the busy season for our businesses. And I'm going to preface this episode by saying that I actually really don't like the term self-care it gives me the (laughs) heebie-jeebies I don't know why I think maybe for me because a lot of the things that are uh, very traditionally associated with self-care in the media are things that I don't naturally gravitate towards I much prefer things like calling it things like health and wellness or mental and physical well-being taking care of number one uh, all those things I am very pro self-care I just the word itself just gives me the shivers but if you are somebody who is like me who also uh, maybe doesn't resonate with some of the more traditional self-care activities that get a lot of press we're going to be talking today about other things that you can do besides those things we'll be talking about those things too but I just want to let those of you out there who who maybe don't um, necessarily feel the same connection to going to the spa or something like that um there's other ways that you can practice self-care so we're going to talk about all of those today uh the reason i wanted to bring this up today as i mentioned already is that we are in september and september for many of us feels like the real new year i I don't know if you're like that but i have always loved september i have always loved the back to school season it always felt very fresh and new far more so than January ever does. And so I know for a lot of you, particularly if you're parents, most of you, your kids are back in school this year. And I think we're all hoping, fingers crossed, that they're able to stay there safely for the full school year. Um, And last year, school was all over the place for so many of you. It really depended on where you lived. I know some of you decided to do homeschooling just to make sure that you had a stable school situation for the whole year. I know some of you were doing hybrids and uh, virtual schooling and some of the kids were in school. It was just a big hodgepodge and made it really difficult to plan or uh, focus on your own business at the same time. So like I said, fingers crossed, hopefully they're able to stay in school safely for the rest of the year. I also know that many of you have gone back to school this year, which I find really interesting. Um, And by back to school, I know that there are some of you who've gone back to university or who are taking continuing education programs through your local university or college. But I also know that a lot of you are taking courses or programs to help you move your businesses forward. So that falls very much into that whole fresh new year, time to learn something, going back to school mentality. And um, it adds to your level of busyness. (laughs) Because let's not forget, September is the month leading up to Q4. And for the vast majority of us, Q4 is the busiest season of the year for our businesses. And if you have not 
listened to it already, I do highly recommend that you go check out, um, I'm just going to look up the episode, episode number 70 of the podcast, Holiday Season Prep. And in that episode, Heather Travis and I walk you through all the things to do to start prepping your business for Q4 so that you can just focus on selling your product or your services. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that one, I highly recommend that you do. I'll put a link to it in the show notes for this episode. So let's talk about self-care and why it's important and what it is. Um, As I mentioned, self-care is not a word that I particularly resonate with. Um, A lot of the things that are traditionally associated with it are things that I actually don't find relaxing um, at all. And we'll get into that in a few minutes and we'll talk about some alternative ways that you can look after yourselves. But the reason why I do believe so strongly in self-care or health and wellness or mental and physical well-being is because of how critical our bodies are to our businesses. Most of us listening, most of you listening to this podcast and myself, who's sitting here yapping at you all, um, our bodies are critical to our business. They are, we are our business. And in order for our business to be successful, our bodies need to be operating at peak performance levels, both physically and mentally. And I think it's really important to focus just as much on the mental side of it as the physical side of it. But they're both important. They both go together. And it is really crucial that we take care of both of those things. Because if we're out of commission, what would happen to your business? If all of a sudden you came down with something that required you to be in bed for a week, what would happen to your business? Could it float along without you for a week and still be profitable and still sales could happen, products could ship out, commitments could be filled? Could those things happen or would you have to delay? And what happens if you're out of commission for a month or three months or six months? Could your business keep going? That's a bigger question, one to think about. Um, and and probably one worth a podcast episode on its own. But this is why it's so crucial for us to be, to take care of ourselves, essentially. (laughs) Um, Particularly for us as creatives, because for most of us, our businesses work off of our creativity. It's, It's Melissa's creativity. It's your creativity. And so if you are not able to have that creative output what would happen to your business could you could somebody else take over do you have another designer do you have another artist a painter an illustrator somebody who could make your jewelry somebody who could design new jewelry under your brand those are the kinds of things that we need to think about and if the idea of having somebody else come in and create on your behalf makes you very uncomfortable, then that's just one more reason why we really need to look after ourselves. And I like to compare what we do to what professional athletes do. I think it is a really good metaphor. The similarities are so (laughs) similar. (laughs) Um, When you think of a professional athlete, somebody who is uh, competing at the highest level, so we're talking like Olympic athletes, uh, NHL players, Major League Baseball players, um, football players, any kind of sport where they're operating at a very high level. And let's be honest, a lot of money is on the line. Okay, for those athletes, their bodies are their careers. And many of them know that they are going to have very short lived careers as a professional athlete. That's just the nature of what they do. So they need to make the most of their shortened earning span. And that's why almost everything that they do off the field is about supporting their body's ability to perform at a peak level. And that's something we need to think about too, because 
we need our body to be operating at a peak level, our body and our mind to be operating at a peak level in order to perform at a peak level. So when you think of a professional athlete, these people are surrounded by teams of people whose jobs are to look after them mentally and physically. So they have people who make sure that they are eating properly, make sure that they are training properly. So not necessarily practicing their sport, but keeping their body in top condition through specific workouts and exercises. Um, They have people who help them mentally. There's a whole field of sports psychology, people who help athletes get to that level of top performance through visualization techniques and um, all kinds of like mental coaching and things like that. Have you ever considered that for your business? (laughs) I mean, really, it makes a lot of sense right? You know, some of us maybe think that a coach is not something we need. And yet a coach could be a very valuable asset to your team, to your business's team. So professional athletes also have specialty coaches. So, you know, football has all kinds of coaches. I don't follow football, so I don't know all the right names, but let's take baseball because I'm, I'm better with baseball, but baseball has pitching coaches hitting coaches, base running coaches. There's so many different coaches to help with specific aspects of an athlete's game. Same applies in hockey. Um, Think of swimmers. Swimmers have their coaches, but they also have dry land coaches. They do dry land training, stuff that they do before they ever get into the water. So swimmers, divers, figure skaters, all of them have dry land coaches. So they have all these different people who are there to help them. They work with nutritionists who make sure, and dietitians who make sure that they are eating properly to fuel their bodies so that they can do the things they need to do. They understand how important it is that they get their rest. There is a reason why sports have seasons, okay? Because those athletes go at it full tilt for months and they recognize that they can't do that 12 months of a year so they need that time where they can take a break and they can go out on the golf course or just read a book by the pool and just have a couple of months where they can relax rest recuperate from any small nagging injuries and just have some time to get their body to recover So we need that too. We need to recover. We need to relax. We need to build in time for that. So if you think about what an athlete does, all of those things are are done to keep them, like I said, in operating at peak performance. So if I was to throw that over to you and ask you what you are doing to keep your body operating in peak performance, would you be hitting those key areas? And the key areas that I'm, I'm looking at are movement do you move your body every day outside of the repetitive motions that you do for your job so if you are somebody who spends a lot of time using a mouse or a pencil or a keyboard or you are standing over a desk soldering all day or you are standing packing your orders and you have a certain workflow that you go through that you repeat over and over again, those are repetitive motions that you are doing for your job. You also need to move outside of that. If you sit all day, you need to get up and move. So exercise is crucial. Do you need to go out and hit the gym for an hour and do like an insane cardio Um, workout or an insane weightlifting workout no you don't but you do need to get up and move every day you need to get up and move every hour actually Um, and this is where something like a little timer can really help you so for me I spend most of my day um, at my desk and I'm usually in front of a screen and I wear a Fitbit and at 10 to the hour my Fitbit buzzes at me if I haven't done 250 steps during the hour. So this isn't so much about getting steps. I will get up if 
if it does buzz at me because it does mean that I've been sitting there all day and at the very minimum I need to stretch I need to move my neck around I need to loosen my shoulders because they're usually up around my ears by that point I need to flex my hands and I need to do just do a little movement sometimes all I need is just 50 jumping jacks that can really get things flowing uh, sometimes it means getting up and taking the dog out for a quick walk or maybe cleaning the bathtub, just something to get all my muscles loose and to get some blood flowing. So think about how you can take small breaks throughout the day and just make sure that you're moving and getting a little bit of blood flowing. The next one is meditation. And I know there's a lot of people out there who don't believe in meditation and that's cool. You don't need to meditate in the traditional sense where you're sitting cross-legged um, and with your eyes closed. There are so many different things you can do that are meditative. So I do meditate. I find it extremely helpful for me. I use the Headspace app to help me, but I also do a lot of things that are meditative. And there's a whole list of them out there, of things that you can do. One that works for me really well is uh, just drawing for no purpose other than to draw. So I do these things called rainbow squares where I just draw geometric shapes in different colors over and over and over again. Um, I might share some of them. I'll try and share some of them on the Facebook page or on Instagram so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's a very meditative activity for me. I just sit there and I just fill pages of a graph notebook with these squares. <laughs> and I might have music on in the background or I might listen to a TV show that I've seen a hundred times or something. Um, but the whole process is just very meditative. It lets my brain get into kind of a flow where it doesn't think about anything else. But there's lots of other things you can do as well. I find that anything that you do with your hands that you really have to focus on can become very meditative. So things like drawing, knitting, embroidery, woodworking, um, even doing the dishes. Sometimes you just get into that zone when you're doing the dishes. You're kind of looking out the window and there's water and you just get that whole flow. Another thing that is very meditative for me is jigsaw puzzles. Okay, that is something where my brain really has to focus on all these different little tasks like finding the pieces, fitting the pieces together. I actually just read an article on how doing jigsaw puzzles works eight different parts of your brain and, and how it can actually um, be very useful um, for warding off things like dementia and Alzheimer's because it keeps your brain very active and it keeps so many different parts of your brain active. It was a fascinating article. If I can find it, I'll put it in the show notes. But I find jigsaw puzzles really work well for me. I always have one on the go. I keep it in the basement and my day ends at five o'clock. That's when I go to feed my dog. And while he's eating his dinner in the laundry room, I am working on a jigsaw puzzle for 10 or 15 minutes. And it kind of wraps up my work day and lets my brain get into like a weird little focus flow mode. And after the 10 or 15 minutes are up, I feel very refreshed and ready to move on. It takes me forever to get these puzzles done, but it's just a really great little break. And because your brain is focused on so many different pieces, it can't think about all the things that are stressing you out. So your brain is not thinking about all the emails that you didn't reply to today or the project that you really wanted to get wrapped up or the fact that your boxes, your packaging hasn't arrived yet or anything like that. You just get into this state of flow and that's what meditation is. It's really just getting into a state of flow where your brain focuses on one very small thing and lets everything else go. And if you're doing traditional meditation, what you're focusing on is your breathing. So you're just focusing in on breathing in and breathing out um, and nothing else. So lots of different ways that you can meditate. It's just important to find a couple that work for you. It doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be that sit down meditation style. Although I do recommend trying it if you've, if you've never done it before. I do find it really helps me a lot. The next one is fuel. 
<laughs> so <laughs> what we put into our bodies is really important and it is what helps keep us operating at peak performance when we put it into our bodies is also important um, and these are the basics that we have learned since we were a kid you know eat breakfast it's important it gets your body moving there's a reason it's called breakfast it's break fast you're breaking your fast that you had while you were sleeping overnight so you want to make sure that you're eating properly you're putting good fuel in okay if you put bad fuel in you get a bad output it's just like a car right? You want to put the good fuel in so that you have a good output. And this is something, when we are extremely busy, that tends to be when we put the, the crap into our bodies. And that's, that's, that's the opposite of what we should be doing. That's when we should really be making a concerted effort to put the good stuff into our body. That's when we should maybe cut back on the booze a little bit. All those things, because that doesn't help us be productive when we know we have to be busy so fuel is important taking time to create is important we have talked about this in so many episodes but we are creatives and it is important for us to be able to create and it is important for us to fill our creative wells in order to stave off burnout so make sure that you give yourself a little bit of time to create when you're in the throes of busy season, that can be really hard. I know that. And we're going to talk specifically about the busy season in a minute. But I just want to get through the last couple of points on what self-care is. The next one is learning. So I didn't really know what to call this. I didn't know if I should call it learning or growth or what. But let's call it learning for lack of a better word. This is something that we all need to do. We all need to keep learning. We all need to keep growing. We all need to keep being challenged. And so it's important to take a little bit of time out of your day to make that happen. And there's so many different ways you can make this happen. You don't have to sign up for a course. You don't have to go back to school. It could be as simple as reading the news, not just your local news, but the international news. Find out what's going on in the world. It could be reading a book for 20 minutes before you go to bed. Um, it could be watching a documentary on Netflix at the end of the day. Just something small to kind of keep your brain thinking about things. Any kind of puzzles, um, those things keep your brain clicking and thinking and growing. And that's something that you want to make sure that you're doing. Last but not least is rest. Okay, so let's talk about rest. Let's talk about sleep. I'm an eight hour sleep kind of girl. I don't function if I get less than eight hours. I don't really function if I get more than eight hours. So I kind of have this half hour window where I'm operating at peak performance. Seven and a half hours, I can probably be okay. Seven hours, not so much. Eight and a half hours, that's kind of the limit as to how far I can sleep. Um, I love to sleep. It is one of my favorite things. I love getting into my bed at night. I love curling up and falling asleep. Oh, just thinking about it is so delicious right now. <laughs> but I also know what it's like when you can't sleep and how miserable it can make you. Um, and I really noticed it this summer. We had three separate heat waves and it was just impossible to get a good night's sleep. Just impossible. And the impact it had on me and not just me, everyone around me, everyone was cranky, short-tempered, uh, just, you know, the littlest thing sets you off. You make silly mistakes. You're in a bit of a fog. Things You do things you would never normally do. You forget things. You just, your brain just doesn't function well when you're not well rested. So, you know, I know as we head into this upcoming season that it can be really difficult to uh, find time to sleep like that sort of seems to be the first thing to go when you've got so many things on the go but really it should be the first thing that you protect in my opinion um, because it's so crucial to everything else uh, that goes on with your body not getting enough sleep can affect your hormones it can affect your mental capacity so many different things that can cause issues for you cumulatively or on their own so Try to make room for sleep 
And this is another one where I know for a lot of us, towards the end of the day, we'll kick back and we'll pour a glass of wine to help ourselves relax. And just be careful with that as you head into the holiday season, particularly as we also start to spend more time with friends and things. Alcohol consumption tends to increase. And just remember that alcohol is a depressant um, and it can really impact your your sleep. It might make you fall asleep, but you may not have as deep a sleep or as restful a sleep. So, you know, take it easy on things like that. Same with the rich food that tends to appear this time of year. But, you know, it's so easy to overdo those things because all that rich food is comforting. It's comfort food. Hey, I get it. I'm a comfort food junkie, for lack of a better word. But I know that when I eat too much of it, it really impacts my ability to sleep. It's not fun trying to sleep when you've got a heavy feeling in your stomach. So moderation. <laughs> Let's just practice moderation as we go through Q4. Because getting that rest is really critical. And um, if you're the type of person who can nap and you can find a little 10-15 minute window in your day to have a nap, go for it. If you're the type of person who's more like me, uh, taking a 20 minute nap in the middle of the day is disaster for me. <laughs> I do not function well after a nap. Don't take a nap, but just find ways to get some rest throughout the upcoming quarter. So those are kind of the, the, the key, the six keys for me when it comes to self-care, movement, meditation, fuel, rest, learning and creating and I will have all of this listed in the show notes so let's get into some of the more practical aspects of this so how can you support your body during the holiday season it's important to note the word season there and I am a believer that there are seasons in life and in work and in business and there are going to be times where you're going to have to go all in for a period of time and that's okay. It's okay to do that, providing that at the end of that season, you have a season of rest. And this is where a lot of us trip up. We go all in during that season where we, where it's needed in our business. But then when that season ends, we don't take the season of rest. <laughs> we, we try to find things to keep busy or things that we can work on in our business, or we try to... Um, come up with ideas to get people to buy or we go into a, a studio frenzy where we're trying to come up with new ideas and new new products for the next busy season but it's really important that if you're going to go all in for three months that you make sure you have some downtime at the end of those three months and that you are very protective of that we talked about setting boundaries with social media last week. It's important that you set boundaries with your business and your body as well. So I'm not saying you need to take three months off, but you need to take a week off, maybe two weeks, and you need to remove yourself from your business for a while and just let your body and your brain process the season that you've just been through and then have some time to relax and not think about it and you'll find that at the end of two weeks, your brain is starting to click again. It's like it's coming up with new ideas. I'm, I'm snapping my fingers here. Um, it's coming up with new ideas and new things that it wants to do. And that's because it's had a chance to like catch up with everything that just happened. Okay, so um, if you're going to go all in for the season, go all in for the season. But just please Put in your calendar right now, the first two weeks of January, block them off, or the last two weeks of January, or whatever works for you. It's crucial. It's crucial to ensure that you don't wind up burning out. It's crucial for your health, both physical and mental. So let's dive into how you can support your body during the holiday season. I want you to make a list of the things that you could take off your plate during the holiday season. And this list is going to be different for everyone. It's really going to depend on your particular life. But are there things that you could potentially stop doing for three months? Are there things that you could potentially get somebody to help you with for three months? Um, and that leads me into the next point. Can you hire some help? both in your business and in your life. So maybe it means hiring somebody to pick the kids up from school for the next three months. Or maybe it means getting your partner to be on school pickup or daycare pickup. 
Maybe if the kids are at home with you after school, maybe you investigate seeing whether or not you can have them go to daycare a couple after school daycare for a couple of afternoons a week so that you have a full day to work it could be hiring somebody in to come and help you keep the house clean you might want to hire a meal service i you know you might not want to do this for the full three months but we all have a, a week or two in q4 that is crazy you know it's the week before your shipping deadline it's the week where you need to have all your product made it's going to be different again for everyone but maybe you hire a meal service during that week so that you don't have to worry about dinner or if the budget stretches to it maybe you get takeout find a way to get some help is what i'm trying to say we did an episode with stephanie todd uh last year or actually it was earlier this year, last season anyway. Um, and for those of you who know Stephanie, she is a meal planner. And the way that she got started with meal plan and meal prep is that for her, it was an act. She actually described it as an act of self-care because she had a very busy, high-level job. And for her, knowing on Sundays that she had prepped food for her family to eat that she had cleaned and organized her fridge she had food prepped she knew that her family was going to get good home-cooked meals she knew she was going to get a good home-cooked meal because remember you got to worry about fueling yourself as well as the people around you and so for her this was an act of self-care it was one thing that she could spend a few hours on on the weekend and take it off her shoulders for the rest of the week Dinner decision fatigue is a real thing, <laughs> especially when you're cooking for a whole bunch of people. It's just like, oh my God, I have to think of what's for dinner again today. But by meal prepping, she was taking that decision fatigue away. And she was also taking the work of actually making the food away. So maybe that's something you can do for your family, or maybe it's something that you hire somebody to do for your family. And again, it doesn't have to be forever. It can just be for this season or for your busiest week of the year, whatever. Just don't be afraid to take those things off your plate wherever you can. Can you hire help in your business? So maybe it's packing orders. We all have that one week, you know, where we have our shipping deadline if people want to receive something by Christmas. And the week leading up to that can be extremely busy when it comes to packing orders. Maybe you can get somebody to come in and help you pack orders for a week. Um, I'm not saying you need to hire an employee because I think a lot of people hear that and they're like, I can't deal with an employee. I'm not talking about hiring an employee. I'm talking about hiring a contractor <laughs> to come in and help you out for a week. Just on an assembly line of packing orders, putting labels on boxes, taking things to the post office or coordinating the courier pickup, whatever it may be, but that could help you tremendously. Maybe you hire somebody to answer all your Etsy conversations. I don't know. There's lots of different things. It could just be hiring somebody to do a very specific task that having it taken off your plate could make a world of difference for you. It could be your kids. It could be your spouse or your partner. It could be a friend who is maybe a stay-at-home mom who would love something to do during the day um, and that earns them a few extra dollars. It could be lots of different things. Um, it could be if you've got teenagers, it could be them. It could be one of their friends. Maybe they've got a friend who's looking for a few extra dollars. Facebook groups are a great place to find people too. There's lots of mom groups out there with moms who are looking to pick up a few hours here and there. Maybe it's hiring a dog walker for a couple of weeks. There's, there's apps out there where you can get somebody, find somebody in your area who can come walk your dog for you. Although I would strongly recommend walking your own dog because that also gets you moving and out of the house and gives your body a chance to kind of loosen up and get some blood flowing. So, but again, everybody's situation is different. So those are some of the things you can do for the holiday season. It's also important that you try to find slivers of time in your day that you can take for yourself. So maybe it is reading a book for 10 minutes while you eat your lunch. Or maybe, like I said, it's walking the dog. Or maybe you take your parcels to the post office, but instead of driving, 
you walk to the post office or a mailbox if possible if you've got one near you maybe it is taking 15 minutes before everybody else in the house is up to have a few moments of meditation or to read a book with your coffee or to catch up on the news before you start your day just just look for the slivers you may not be able to find an hour but I'm pretty sure you can find five or 10 minutes. Find those slivers in your day and make the most of them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about things you can do from a self-care perspective throughout the year, some of which are things that you probably already associate with self-care, but some of which are maybe things you haven't thought of. So I think for a lot of us, when we hear the word self-care, we think of things like Uh, getting a manicure, going to the spa, uh, getting a massage. That's not for everybody. Those, first of all, those are very legitimate self-care activities. Do not get me wrong. If you love doing those things and they make you feel good, absolutely do them. (laughs) This is not about saying, about judging what kind of self-care activities you, you do. It's just that I know that there are a lot of us who don't find those activities relaxing. I am one of them. Going for a massage stresses me out. Going to a salon or a spa stresses me out. Those are not relaxing, comforting activities for me. So I want you to think about what does make you happy, what is relaxing. And honestly, one of the best ways to think about it is just think about the activities that you enjoy doing when you have downtime. So maybe for you, that's hitting a mountain bike trail or going hiking, or doing a jigsaw puzzle. Those are all activities that qualify as self-care. Mountain biking or going hiking would be great because not only are you giving yourself some time out from your business and from your life, you're also moving your body. (laughs) So right there, great activity to do. There's many things that you can do. So think about, make a list of the things that you really like to do. Those can be your self-care activities. It could be reading a book, It could be going for coffee with a friend. It could be going for a walk. It could be lying on the floor with your dog for 20 minutes, just chilling out. It could be watching Netflix. It could be coloring, a coloring page or a coloring book. It could be knitting. There's so many different things to think about, but there's also these things that we don't think about as much. So I just mentioned Stephanie Todd, and she talked about how she... Meal prepping was a form of self-care for her because it took so much stress off her shoulders during the week. So think about things that if you knew that if you did them, they would make your life so much easier. So um, we did an episode with Andrea Henry, who is a lawyer last season. And one of the things we talked about is how good it feels when you know that you've got all your legal ducks in a row and you've taken care of them. Sometimes self-care is as much about being a grown-up as it is about doing some kind of relaxing activity. Some things that are self-care that we don't tend to think of as self-care are going to the dentist, okay? (laughs) Going to the doctor on a regular basis. Nobody likes doing those two things at all, (laughs) but they're critical to your self-care. Having insurance, that's another thing. It's a very grown-up thing. But again, it's critical. It's just one more weight off your shoulders. If you've ever had a toothache, you know (laughs) how important going to the dentist regularly is. A toothache can cripple you. (laughs) And it can be very expensive. But if you had just gone to the dentist, instead of making that six-month checkup drag out into a one-year checkup, maybe the tooth wouldn't have started to hurt and it wouldn't have cost you a lot of money to fix. So things like that making sure that you have extended health benefits. That's a form of self-care. Saving for an emergency fund is a form of self-care. These are all very grown-up things that we kind of put off and don't like to do, but they are a form of self-care, just as much as the fun and relaxing things are. So that is something to think about when you are thinking of all the different things you could do to take care of yourself. So Anything that can take a weight off your shoulders, that can remove stress from your life, that can make you feel better about things, those are all self-care activities. 
So it's important to keep that in mind. Paying your bills on time, that's a form of self-care. <laughs> Looking after your credit rating, a form of self-care. You need to mix in the fun things too. Going on a girls weekend, form of self-care. Make sure that you go with a group of girls who are going to ensure there's no toxicity over the weekend. <laughs> That's a form of self-care. Uh, maybe it's going away on your own for a weekend. Maybe it's booking a night in a hotel in the city and just having a week, not even a weekend, a night to yourself. Get some room service. Watch a movie that you wouldn't get to watch at home because nobody else would want to watch it. Something like that. That can be a form of self-care. You don't have to spend a lot of money on self-care could be reading you can go to the library you can get books for free you can get magazines for free at the library <laughs> going out for a walk doesn't cost you a dime getting on the bus and visiting a new neighborhood and exploring costs you the price of a bus ticket which I don't know what that is it's been a little while since I've taken the bus with this pandemic but you know let's say it's three or four dollars not a lot of money. Another thing, one thing I do for myself for self-care, my Friday afternoons are always blocked off. I don't do phone calls. I don't do meetings. I don't schedule any work during those times. If I decide I want to work, I can. That's great for me. But if I just want to take the afternoon off and go to the movies or bake some muffins or go for a hike, I am free to do that with no guilt whatsoever. That is my reward for running my own business and working my butt off the rest of the week. And like I said, some weekends I do, some Fridays I do work that afternoon. Some Fridays I take it off, but I, I take it off without guilt. And that is also a form of self-care is doing activities and removing the guilt from it that you should be doing something else that's more productive or that you could be spending time on such and such okay just remove the guilt from it okay because what you're doing is critical to the success of your business this is the thing you have to remember all these activities are crucial to the success of your business and it's not just one activity it's an accumulation of multiple activities in those six key areas movement meditation fuel rest, learning, and creating. You have to make some time for each of those. So as we head into this busy season, I really hope that you find a way to make some time for self-care, for your own well-being. Remember, it's just as much about what goes on between your ears as it is what goes on physically with your body. Um, find the slivers in your day. Make sure that you have booked some time off at the end of the busy season to really de-stress and process the season that you've had and take some time to relax and let your body rest and recover, recuperate like an athlete. Um, yeah, and if the athlete metaphor helps you out, um, use it. I find it extremely helpful for myself. I am so far from being an actual athlete. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an athlete in my business. So um, the biggest thing you can do with these things, keep them consistent. Try to find the slivers of time in your day. And then when you get to the next season, you can make more time for self-care. It's going to fluctuate and that's okay. But it's really important that you do find little slivers of time in your day as we head into Q4 and that you make time for that extended period, extended season of relaxation at the end of Q4. So that's it for this week everyone this was this was a strange episode for me to record because like I said it's a word that I just struggle with but I don't struggle with the actual act of it I know how important that is for me I know how important it is for my businesses and I hope that all of you also recognize how important it is for you and for your businesses and for your life and your family so um yeah I hope you've all found this helpful and that's it for this week. Thank you all so much for listening. And I'll be back next week with another new episode. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us for the And She Looked Up Creative Hour. If you're looking for links or resources mentioned in this episode, you can find detailed show notes on our website at andshelookedup.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more business tips, profiles of inspiring Canadian creative women, and so much more. If you enjoyed this episode, 
Please be sure to subscribe to the show via your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. We always love to hear from you, so we'd love it if you'd leave us a review through iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Drop us a note via our website at anshelookedup.com or come say hi on Instagram at anshelookedup. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.